All right, so are you looking to move to the DC metro area and you're just a little confused on where exactly to get started when you are looking on which area to move to? Maybe you have what a lot of my buyers have, what I like to call analysis paralysis. They're just a plethora of information out there. You know, you get kind of lost in the information and get overwhelmed. But in today's video, I'm gonna go over to the five things that I like to talk to my clients about kind of getting back to the basics when looking for a place to live in the DC metro area. So that's what we're gonna go over in today's video. Stick around to the end of the video because the final tip, number five, is gonna be a little bit of a surprise to you. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Bryant. I am the host of this channel. And at the end of the video, if you found this video useful and you got a little bit of information out from it, please give it a thumbs up. It will really help the algorithm and it'll put this video in front of people just like you Googling the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, one of the biggest challenges that I see buyers have when they are relocating to the DC metro area is they don't exactly know where they wanna live because this is such a large area. There's a lot of different areas to live and to choose from and it just gets overwhelming. And a lot of the times I'm driving these clients around the area from maybe Leesburg all the way down to Woodbridge into Alexandria, Arlington. They just really don't know where exactly they want to live. They don't have that clear path and uh, set def you know, definition of what they're looking for. And honestly, it's, it's a waste of everybody's time. Not only is it a waste of your, your time and the buyer's time driving them around, the, ga you know, the, amount, the hotel costs coming into the area, it's, it's frankly a waste of my time as well. And, and I take some responsibility for that because I maybe didn't sit down with them up front and go over these things to help make that decision a little bit easier. And that is why I'm making this video today. So please stick around till the end. All right, so the number one thing that I like to talk to people about is exactly where are you gonna be working at when you move to the DC area? So if you are maybe working in DC or somewhere closer to the district, and you don't want to have a lot of commuting time, you don't want to spend a lot of time on the road, well, that, that is instantly going to tell me maybe, you know, Leesburg or Stafford or Woodbridge maybe is not for you because you're going to have to have a high tolerance when it comes to sitting in traffic and commute times. You know, it might take you from like, for example, Leesburg, it might take you an hour to an hour and a half to get into DC and out of DC in the afternoon. Uh, maybe the same thing with Woodbridge, maybe like an hour to get down into the DC area uh, from Woodbridge. So the first thing I like to tell people is, where are you gonna be working exactly? What is kind of your tolerance for commuting to work? And then go to a website like my favorite is just go to googlemaps.com. And on googlemaps.com, you can actually set a point A and a point B on the map and you can pick the time and date of like the traffic patterns and what to expect for a commute time. And, and you can kind of get a rough estimate of, of maybe what areas of the district of the, you know, the DC metro area that you're able to and willing to commute from. So that's the first thing that I tell people to do. There are a lot of different things to consider when it comes to the commute time though. Maybe you're someone that's working remotely most of the time. Maybe you only have to go down into DC once or twice a week. So in that case, maybe you're fine living a little bit further out because you're only having to go into making that long commute a couple days a week. You know, maybe you're working from home more often and you know, you just don't have to do as much driving. Or like a lot of people in this area, you've got to go into the office, you know, and then you're going, you're, you have to make that drive five days a week. And when you start thinking about three hours a day sitting in a car to get to and from work, it really starts to add up when, you, when you're doing that five days a week, day in and day out, you know, weeks on end. Also consider how many days a week you might be working from home. It could open up some options, maybe a little bit further out since you don't have to make that commute every single day. All right, the second thing that I like to talk to people about is just your generic lifestyle preference, right? If you are maybe a younger professional and you wanna be in the middle of all the action, you, you know, you wanna be close to the bars, close to the metro, uh, you know, you're very social, you know, maybe not living way out in the suburbs in a quiet area is gonna necessarily be for you. On the other hand, if you're like me, who's a little bit older and doesn't wanna be in the middle of all the actions. I don't wanna be down at the bar every, you know, on the weekends and you know, partying and any of that kind of stuff. So I'm living out in the suburbs. So again, I took that consideration when I was looking at my house. You know, I'm the type of person that wants a little more quiet neighborhood. I don't wanna be down in Reston, maybe where I don't need a car, where, you know, I'm close to the Metro and close to all the action. You know, that's just not, doesn't fit my lifestyle. Maybe it did, you know, 15 years ago, but not anymore. 
So again, if you're young, single, you know, or you're just a young couple and you want to be close to the action, maybe Arlington, Alexandria, or somewhere in the district is a great place for you. If you want a little bit more quiet, you maybe you have young kids and there's, a, you know, you want them in good schools and you want more of a quiet, you know, family atmosphere neighborhood, maybe like Springfield, Burke, Reston, any of those areas are for you. There's just a lot of things to take into consideration. Another one is, are you gonna be traveling a lot for work or are you just a big traveler in general? So maybe you wanna stay a little bit closer inside the district so you are closer to Reagan or maybe you're a little bit uh, to the west of, uh, of the DC metro area towards uh, Dulles uh, or B BWI. You know, for example, if you're traveling a lot and you want to be closer to an airport so you don't have to make that, you know, hour, hour and a half drive back and forth from the airport, maybe you don't want to live down in Stafford or Woodbridge or, you know, any of those areas where it's going to be a pretty long commute to get to any major airport. All right, the next thing I want to talk to you about is just your budget. Like, what kind of budget are you on when it comes to buying your house? For the most part, based on size and condition of the house, the closer you are to DC in, in this area, the more expensive houses are gonna get. So if you wanna live in a nice single family house in Arlington, you're gonna be you know over a million dollars for that. If you want the same house out in Leesburg, maybe you're looking at six, seven, eight hundred thousand for that you know, a same similar property. And I know I've talked about this in other videos, but what I like to do is do the pick two scenario with my clients. So basically there are three things I like to talk about. Price, location, and condition. You get to pick two of those, price, location, and budget. And I tell them to pick two because if you're on a budget of any sort, you're most likely gonna have to settle with two out of the three. You're gonna have to concede on one of those. So for example, maybe it's a good price and a good location. Well, maybe the condition isn't gonna be quite there. Or it's a good price and it's a good condition, the location is something you might have to give up. You might have to little, live a little bit further out to be able to afford those two. In good location and good condition, you're going to have to give up on the price portion because if you want, like again, if you want to live in Alexandria, Arlington, you know, anything like that in a nice property, a very nice property, you're going to be giving up the price tag on that one. You're going to be paying a lot for that house. All right, the fourth thing I like to talk about with my clients is do a scouting trip. If you can swing a scouting trip, it just has to be a weekend. The, the thing I love most is working with a client that is coming into the area. They have some general idea. We've already talked a little bit about their budget, the lo, you know, ideal location, their family. We've talked about these types of things these types of things and when they fly into town I pick them up from the hotel or the airport or whatever and we get a cruise around the area and we get to go look at homes we get to learn the neighborhoods and kind of get a just a good feel for what this area has to offer and I'd also suggest staying in a couple different locations too so maybe when you fly in you fly into Dulles you stay out in that area you stay you know you're, you're kind of you know, traversing the western part of the DC metro area and maybe you spend a day down in Arlington or Alexandria, kind of understand the feel of the, the, the city, kind of the vibe down there. And then maybe if, if, again, maybe you transfer and go down into DC for a night and you kind of get the idea of what, you know, mingle with the people down there and kind of get a feel for the daily uh, routines of, of, the D, of DC. Because ultimately just watching videos like this and me telling you about how great these places are really doesn't, help as much as just getting there, immersing yourself in the, in the area and kind of understanding the, you know, how things are flowing, how, you know, the general feel of what it is like living here, especially if you're coming from an area that's not like this area, you know, it's a big metropolitan area. Maybe you, you know, you're in the Midwest somewhere in a smaller, smaller town, uh, and you, you just don't really understand what it's like to just have all these, all these suburbs grouped together and have this big metropolis. But I will tell you it's worth every penny. It's worth a few thousand dollars up front to come out here and do a scouting trip. You know, again, I'm happy to drive my clients around the area and show them some of my favorite neighborhoods, maybe some neighborhoods that I think would work best for them and their family and their in their lifestyle and their budget and their where you know where they're gonna be working. All those things are gonna come into play uh, when you come in and do that scouting trip. So I'd highly recommend it if that's something that you could swing. All right, and the fifth and final thing I talk to my clients about, and again, this is gonna be a little surprising coming from a real estate agent that buy, help, helps people buy and sell real estate. I'd recommend just renting. If you do not wanna to commit to a certain area before you get a feel for living here, Renting is a great way to immerse yourself around this area, uh, you know, without committing yourself to, you know, a, to a house. 
So I don't think anybody should rent for long periods of time, but maybe for a year, you come here and you spend, you know, do a one year lease living in a particular area, you know, maybe close to work, or if you identify some schools, school districts where maybe you want your kids to go, you can get them into those schools. And then as, you're, as you are learning the area, you can start narrowing down in particular, you know, types of house, neighborhoods or anything, especially if you want to keep your kids in the same schools you started in. You can, you know, you don't, you don't have to be committed to that one house that you had to, you know, you got to see once or you saw virtually on photos or videos that, that, you know, your agent sent you. It's just overall, I have a lot of people that actually do end up renting. They rent for a year before they buy. And that's, I see, I see that as a good thing. We are lucky that we're living in a time where information is so accessible, right? You can jump on Google, you can get onto YouTube, you can go down a rabbit or you can go down a yeah, rabbit hole on Reddit. Uh, there's all these different places where you can find out what the locals think, what you know, what people, their opinions on different areas of, of the places you're going to live, right? So use the internet, use Google, use YouTube, use all these websites, learn about the area as much as you can. Again, if you can get a scouting trip, great, because I, again, I think that is really what, you know, it's really worth that couple thousand dollars that you would spend on the plane tickets and the hotels. And again, if you have a real estate agent like me who is happy to drive you around, you don't need a rental car either. You can rely on a real estate agent to drive you around for a while, and then you can also get around with some public transportation or Uber. So it's it's very prevalent in this area. For schools, I would highly recommend going pl going and checking out places like greatschools.org or niche.com to kind of get an idea of what the schools are for these particular neighborhoods you're gonna be looking in. I would also highly recommend calling those schools or visiting the, their school pages, like their Google pages or anything to gather a little bit more uh, feedback on what, what people are saying about the schools and what, you know, what the people that actually utilize those schools are saying about them. So I would highly recommend using as many electronic sources as you can to help you make a decision. All right, and that's all I have for you in today's video. I hope you got a little bit of something out of today's video. If you did, please give that thumbs up. It really does help the algorithm put this information in front of people just like you Googling the exact same things. And if you wanna learn more about living in the DC metro area and you wanna continue your education like I'm telling you to do online, I'd highly recommend going and checking out this video and we will see you over there.